So we're going into a place called the Maine Woods. Um, what is the Maine Woods? Well, before we talk about Maine Woods, we should talk about what is Maine. Um, unless you're from the Northeast, um, you probably don't really know much about Maine um, or the East Coast in general, I've found. Um, so Maine is the northernmost state in the country. Um, uh, it is also one of the wildest states east of the Mississippi. We have massive forests, lots of wildlife. Um, it's not what most people think of when they think of the East Coast. Maine is a very, very wild place. Um, the Maine woods is basically everything that you see here, which is green, right? It's the forest in Maine. Um, most of the northern part of the state is covered in forest. Um, the North Maine woods is this area up here, and this is where we're going to focus our activities. Um, and um, this is an area that has millions of acres of forest, um, lots of uh, logging is going on here, and there's also lots of unlogged intact forests as well. Um, there is uh, Baxter State Park, which is probably the most important protected area in the state. Um, Baxter State Park was created to protect the forests surrounding Mount Katahdin, um, which is the highest peak in Maine and also the start of the Appalachian Trail, which I'm sure um, probably most of you, maybe even all of you have heard of. Um, and it just started to rain here, which means that I might lose internet connection. Um, so if that happens, I'm apologizing in advance. I'm going to try to power through it though. Um, uh, so um, uh, so that's, that's the Maine woods and that is where we're focusing our field studies uh, in Maine. Um, so what are the objectives of the course? Um, well, first and foremost, I'm a biologist. I'm an entomologist, which means I study insects, um, but I love all kinds of plants and animals. Um, and um, understanding plants and animals is something that's very fun to do. Um, observing them is obviously very, a, a very fun thing to do as well. Um, and understanding more about their biology is really key to understanding how ecosystems function and in turn understanding what our impacts are on ecosystems and how we can fix uh, the, all the problems that we've created. Um, so one thing that we're going to do a lot of is we're going to be hiking around and looking for plants and animals, trying to identify them and trying to study their behavior, their biology, um, and anything else that we can. Um, it, Maine is one of the best places in the country to do this. Um, we have uh, the largest population of moose in the country, uh, in, in the continent, in fact. Um, there's Canada lynx here. There's a, a good population of black bears. And then obviously there's like thousands of different types of insects. Plant diversity is crazy here. Um, there's all kinds of cool stuff uh, in, in, in all of the different aquatic habitats that we're, we're going to be able to explore. Um, uh, so that's one thing that we're going to spend a lot of time doing. Um, we're going to be studying biodiversity. Um, that's a buzzword that I'm sure everybody's heard of. Um, and, and Maine is quite an amazing place to study biodiversity. Um, we're also going to learn about ecosystems and how ecosystems function. Um, you could call the study of ecosystems and how they function community ecology. Um, so we're going to see all kinds of different forest ecosystems, um, spruce hemlock forests, I mean, lots of different types of forests. Um, really cool aquatic ecosystems as well, rivers, ponds, uh, streams, lakes, all kinds of uh, different aquatic habitats. Um, and one of the most important things we're going to focus on, in addition to all of that, is trying to understand how we can protect these things in a way that also allows us to meet the needs of uh, communities of people. Um, so people have been um, uh, exploiting resources in the North Main woods for hundreds of years. Um, the, demographics, the demographics in the state have changed. There's, uh, in recent decades, there's a lot more interest in protecting nature, especially in protecting what's left of the intact forest, the forest that haven't been logged. Um, and and what, oh, my cat, <laughs> um, that's a cliche Zoom problem, isn't it? Um, uh, so um, uh, we're gonna spend a lot of time talking about how we can balance protecting nature with um, uh, meeting the needs of local communities that depend on these resources uh, and that have depended on them for a very, very long time. Um, so how are we going to achieve all this? Um, we're going to achieve all this by doing lots of different uh, things. Um, first, we're going to do lots of hiking. Um, so Maine 
Um, Why well, I mentioned this is the start of the Appalachian Trail. So tons of people come to Baxter to start the Appalachian Trail and to hike on all of the other trails um, uh, that the state park has. Um, uh, we're gonna be doing a lot of hiking in and around Baxter State Park, um, looking for wildlife, studying the plants and animals that are found there, um, uh, checking out the landscapes. There's all kinds of really amazing uh, uh, views of the mountains, uh, Mount Katahdin. It's a really, really amazing place to hike. I would have to say of all the places I've hiked, at least on the Eastern half of the country, this is definitely far and away the most uh, impressive place to hike in terms of the views and, and, and a lot of the other things um, that you'll see. Um, we're going to check out uh, these aquatic habitats by doing a multi-day canoe trip down a river called the Penobscot River. Um, this is um, one of the few uh, wild rivers left in Eastern North America. Um, we're gonna get to canoe down it for a few days and it's the type of thing where you might not even run across any other people, paddlers or anything. Um, so that's gonna be really cool. Um, the west branch of the Penobscot River, which we're gonna paddle down is also the best place in the state to see moose. Um, and during that time of year, um, we have um, not a guaranteed chance, but we have a pretty good chance of seeing moose and mother moose with their calves. So that will be really fun. And there's all kinds of other wildlife that we can see. Um, and, and this is gonna be an important component um, of the course. Um, uh, we're gonna do group activities at all of the different sites that we're gonna visit. Um, we're gonna learn how to estimate above ground biomass. So the carbon that's stored in trees, right? Protecting forests is obviously one of the big ways that we can mitigate the impacts of climate change. And we're gonna learn how we can actually study that. Um, how much carbon are these forests actually storing? Um, we're going to learn how to um, quantify biodiversity, right? So we're going to do more than just um, look for pretty plants and animals, but we're also going to learn how to study them. How do we measure how biodiverse the places are that we're going to be going? Um, and of course, we're going to be doing lots of readings. And we're going to be discussing those readings as a group. We're going to read things ranging from uh, articles in peer-reviewed scientific journals to planning documents for a new national monument that has just been created east of Baxter State Park. Um, we're gonna be uh, reading government documents, all kinds of different things. Um, and, and we're gonna be talking about that as a group. And, and we're, gonna, we're gonna try as a group to learn how to synthesize all of those um, different sources of information and understand and contextualize them. Um, so that in a nutshell is uh, what we're gonna be doing um, in Maine. So um, let's move quickly to the itinerary. Um, uh, so we're going to start in Portland, not Portland, Oregon, but Portland, Maine. There's more than one Portland in the U.S. Um, and we're going to start the program in Portland, Maine. Um, this is a really cool town um, on the coast. The main coast is beautiful. Portland is a really, really amazing uh, little town. Um, we're going to start there. And from there, we're going to go north um, to this little town called Millinocket. And Millinocket is the gateway to Baxter and now to Katahdin Woods and Waters, which is the new national monument. I'll talk about that uh, in, in, in a second. Um, from there, we enter Baxter State Park, and we're going to be going for, for I think, six days um, to this little um, campground in Baxter called um, Nisa Wadnahunk. Um, so there's lots of names that probably look very strange to you. Um, lots of the names of towns and other places in Maine are named after native um, uh, uh, communities that still or once inhabited the area. Um, Nisa Wadenhunk is an indigenous name. Um, it's, now the, it's now a campsite in Baxter State Park. Um, we're gonna be based there. And from there, we're gonna be doing day hikes um, to see some of the cool things that we can see and study and explore in Baxter. We're gonna stay there for a little bit for week. Um, State Park. Um, this is kind of like a closer up aerial view of Baxter. Um, our uh, campsite is up here. This is Mount Katahdin. So this is, um, uh, for the East Coast, this is a really big mountain. Um, and it's the centerpiece of the state park. Um, you can see all these little ponds. Maine has thousands of little lakes. We call them ponds in Maine. Um, these are very, very uh, important aquatic habitats for moose, uh, beavers, lots of other um, uh, important wildlife. Um, and we're gonna get to explore all kinds of um, forests, different forest types, aquatic habitats um, with Mount Katahdin always looming um, in the background. 
So that's Baxter State Park. Um, uh, from Baxter, we're going to go a little bit southwest, and this is where we're going to start our um, uh, overnight or multi-day canoeing trip. Um, so we're going to start um, uh, either here at an old dam that was removed, um, uh, that was disassembled, or we're going to start here at the mouth of Lobster Stream on the Penobscot River, the west branch of the Penobscot River. Um, we still have to figure out um, which of these stretches we can and can't do. Um, lots of, of this depends on the campsites that are available and how big our group is and lots of things. But we're going to go down this river for sure. Um, this is where we're going to have really, really good chances of seeing moose, but lots of other things. I mean, this place is like Bald Eagle City. There's all kinds of really cool stuff here. Um, it's also one of the most beautiful rivers. Um, I, I can't imagine a river being more beautiful um, than this. Um, so, so this is going to be a really, really amazing thing. I've actually not done this in particular, and I'm really excited about this. It's going to be absolutely um, incredible. Um, this is called Lobster Lake here because it's shaped like a lobster claw. So if any of you are from Southern California, you might know spiny lobsters. Or if you've been to Florida, you might know spiny lobsters. We have the same lobsters um, in the South, but here, main lobsters are different. They have big claws. Um, and so that lake is shaped like a lobster claw. And so it's called um, Lobster Lake. And this is Lobster Stream here. And this is the, the west branch of the Penobscot River. And that's where we're going to canoe down. Um, so after that, we're going to go and explore this brand new national monument um, that was uh, one of the final acts of the Obama administration was to um, designate Katahdin Woods and Waters National Monument. Um, so this is uh, in it, there's rivers and lakes and wildlife. It's just crazy. It's a really, really awesome place. Um, it's, it's, it's brand new. Um, the, uh, the National Park Service is still developing lots of recreational opportunities and the planning process is still ongoing, um, which is really cool because we're going to get to read about how that happens and we're going to learn all about how a national monument is created, um, how it's decided what we do with this land, right? We're going to learn about all of the different stakeholders and what everybody wants out of this. This is part of Million Acre National Park, which is going to be called Maine Woods uh, National Park, if it happens. Um, the National Monument is small compared to that. It's still very big, um, but this is part of an ongoing uh, process, right? Conservation is always in motion, and this, this is what I hope is the beginning of a much larger effort to secure a 3 million acre um, national park in Maine, which is a monument. Um, this is just such an incredible place. Um, it's absolutely worth protecting um, and it's definitely worth um, spending two weeks to explore and, and see a little bit of what, what it has to offer. Um, uh, so, uh, and I'm gonna end with um, a few pictures that I took of some of the things that we have a really good chance of seeing um, during our um, during our course, um, all of these pictures were taken in Baxter State Park um, during a three-day trip that I took uh, a few years ago. Um, so this is what the ponds look three days. We didn't have a, we didn't see Mount Katahdin in two weeks. We're very likely to at least see it, um, but Mount Katahdin is up here in the clouds, and this is um, grassy ponds. Uh, down but um and this is just one of thousands of little ponds that are all over the place um we've got crazy things like carnivorous plants um this is a carnivorous plant that my florida students also uh saw it's called drosera or a sundew um and it's it's you can see there's a little insect that it's caught here um they have these sticky little, little balls of resin that they catch insects with and digest them and very cool there's lots of bogs um there's cranberry bogs in um in maine um this is actually cranberries come from and that's one of the big um uh, exports of Maine is cranberries. And we're going to see wild cranberries, potentially carnivorous plants, all kinds of crazy weird things um, in, in the bogs and all the wetlands. Um, this is a moose that we that were, we were just canoeing in one of these ponds and the thing walks like right up to us. We actually had to like back up in the canoe. It was just munching away on the aquatic vegetation. It was one of the most incredible experiences of my life. Um, really, really cool. Um, 
this is a male you can see he, he's got little antlers that are starting to grow and by the time fall comes around um he'll have big antlers and it's the rut season and it's it's incredible these animals are massive um they can reach something like 12 meters tall at the i mean they're huge really really cool um if we're lucky we'll get to see we'll get to see moose um this is a white-tailed deer they're absolutely everywhere um We've got incredible wildflowers um, throughout the region during this time of year. Um, and we're going to see lots of really cool wildflowers. Uh, plant diversity is just crazy in, in Baxter and in, in Maine in general. We're going to see lots of really cool plants. Um, this is another lake down here. Um, I don't even remember the name of this lake. There's so many. It's, it's actually impossible to, to, to remember the names of, uh, of all of them. Um, but so anyway, um, 